Hello guys, it's Whitney with uh, Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots. Thank you for returning, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I've got four spring farmhouse home decor DIYs that were really fun to make. And I kind of went with a little yellow theme there, just felt like it was bright and fresh. So let's jump in. First one here, we're going to start with a $3 tree wood items. So we've got one of the crates, and then I've got, you know, take labels off, and two pallets took the labels off so let's switch to the new one already <laughs> so take those labels off and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the pallets on each side of that little wood crate and we are going to have the wood crate basically be the legs of the crate so that it'll stand up look a little cute little little raised elevation on there makes it look cute so and that was because you know I was messing around when I was holding stuff in the store and they got it kind of jumbled up in the red cart and I was like you know this is weird so as I picked it up I picked it up like that I was like oh, idea you know the the stars aligned and i said i see i see something to put flowers in must communicate so there's my idea there she is also since i've used wood glue and hot glue mainly the wood glue i gotta use my clamps again i love those clamps those are the the big ones got those on amazon they are in my amazon store uh, in the description below so what I'm going to do here is we need to stain this puppy now. So obviously we leave the clamps on, but I'm going to use my Americana Walnut Gel Stain. And I have a little container here with water in it. If you're looking at different items and you're confused, uh, I am confusion as well. But basically what I did here was when I stained everything for this video, I stained it all at the same time. So I went to paint it together. So here's the process. I put all the gel stain in the water. Now, don't do what I did, guys. I used way too much water, but I'll show you that later on. The mixing was a little bit different so i put a little bit of extra gel there on the side but basically the water here was mainly for those little pallets that you see off to the left uh, but the water does help get in those nooks and crannies and the crevices a lot easier um, and it does help with uh, just you know making the product spread more and um, i wasn't having to wipe everything off constantly i was getting good coverage and good color so what i did was after i've obviously soaked it pretty much with the water mixture I have a baby wipe and I'm kind of getting the excess off there so you can see that pretty wood grain. But it wasn't as dark as I wanted it to be. So I did go back with a little bit of the just pure gel stain I have there that I'm dipping my my, uh, my sponge brush into. Periodically you may see me dip a little bit into the water and that would be to get some of it to spread out. But I am going over the main pieces with the gel and I'm not going to wipe that off. I'm going to leave that as it is because I wanted it to be darker. I definitely wanted a good rich color. Um, but I still wanted the wood grain to show. So this is how I did this. And again, guys, I used way too much water. And then I tried to put a little bit of black paint in it. Then I had to add more gel stain in it. And then it, finally, it just took forever mixing and mixing and mixing. And I got it. So don't do what I did. If you already know, you're going to need to use a lot less water. A lot less water. Or if you need that much water, you're going to have to use a lot more of your paint or gel stain. So, yeah. I'm assuming it's probably two to one ratio. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> So live and learn. So here's our end project. Now I'm pointing there because I've already put styrofoam in her, but this is what she looks like after all of our wood glue is dry and all of our, our staining is done. So now I'm going to distress with some white chalk paint. Now that is my um, folk art home decor paint. I put it in these little tiny containers. I got those at Dollar Tree as well. It makes it a lot easier and a lot less messy because all I'm doing is dry brushing on these uh, white distressing. I'm not actually going to be painting solid. So that little tip there I picked up from Melissa from All Things Crafty. She does some amazing work. And I saw her with those cute little, uh, what are those? I'm going to call those sauce dip containers because normally when those are in my house, it's because I have ranch in them. And yes, when I'm home and nobody's there, no one's looking, I do lick the container. But anyways, moving on. So we're just going to distress the whole item there. <laughs> Don't tell nobody, okay, guys? It's a secret. <laughs> anyway, so I'm distressing the whole crate everywhere. Now I'm, I'm going to put flowers in here, but I don't know if I might change them out. I'm hot gluing them in, but at the same time, it's all temporary. You can rip the styrofoam out and start over if you do, if you choose to glue them in, but I want to make sure the entire thing is distressed. Now here, it looks like I forgot to do the bottom, but I did eventually do the bottom of the crate. So the entire thing is covered in whitewash, or at least in the white chalk paint. Uh, distressing to that farmhouse look. So now I've got these chalkboard tags. It says uh, pins or clothes pins, but we're going to rip that clothes pin off the top. Those did not agree with being removed from their home. The clothes pins did not want to come off. So as you can see the mess there, <laughs> quite a few different 
app, uh, tools came into play to get those off, but I really wanted to put a cute little label on the front. I didn't write on it. I just like the way it looks. It looks like a little label. It makes me happy. And I did put one on each side since this can be a centerpiece if you want it to be. Uh, we also have two different types of Michael's flowers. Now, these little yellow guys were probably, I think, from last year or the year before, but they're during, there's, there's a springtime thing. They had a bunch of different, they had roses and daisies and lilies and all kinds of things together. And I chose to get these little yellow girls here. They're just really cute. So I got five bundles and I only cut three bundles up. So this is three bundles of those. And I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue at the end of each stem. And I am literally just pushing them in as I see fit. I will be adding Spanish moss, but I should have done that first. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was just excited to get started because I thought the, the crates turned out great, the staining. I don't know, honestly, guys. Who knows what I was thinking? I was probably thinking something shiny. I don't know. I really wanted to get this one made, so I was super excited to do it. And I apparently forgot the order that I normally do things in. Anyhow, I'm going to pull some of the... Uh, little uh, the branches off of this larger bush here and I'm gonna cut those into three pieces each I really like the longer part um, on the greenery here so each one of those stems I can turn into three different picks so you'll see right when I push this one in here that little long part that pops out I just I love it it turns into such a different like gives good texture because this I mean this bush has perfect texture it has three different elements whereas the other little bushes I chose were all the same so you have a lot of the same, but then you can mix things in. So here's where I'm trying to correct my, my, my oopsie. Put your Spanish moss in first. Don't do what I did. I mean, here I have to tuck it in and I have to move things around. Also, why are there sticks in my Spanish moss? <laughs> uh, I believe I find, oh, well, there's another one. And the award goes to, that's right, one more. <laughs> why are there sticks? Okay, at some point I'm gonna, a squirrel is gonna pop out or something, guys. Seriously, like, you ever get scared of what you might find in some of these things? <laughs> Anyways, that's Dollar Tree Spanish Moss, which I love, but I got a bigger bag of it at Hobby Lobby the other day, so you guys are gonna see. Once I run out of that Dollar Tree stuff, it's a better buy to just buy a bigger bag at Hobby Lobby. So I'm really liking how it turned out. Um, it's full, it's fluffy, and look how cute it is. I love how the little palettes on the sides turned into feet. It's like those ledges were perfect, and with the wood glue on there, she is solid. That is that is not going anywhere. And honestly, you guys can change this out for any season. It'll look good with Christmas items in it. It'll look good with fall. Oh my god, pumpkins. I just thought about pumpkins. <sighs> Anyways, it'll look great no matter what you guys do. So you guys tell me what you think about this little item. The labels themselves, I'm not going to put anything on them, but it's... It says it was chalkboard. You could try it. I don't know if Dollar Tree's, you know, on their game with the chalkboard stuff. Who knows? But that is a cute little label maker. And, I mean, not label. It's a cute little label on the front and the back. I, I love it. It just makes me happy. You guys let me know what you think. And if you duplicate them, you guys tell me what changes you would do. But I, I love how that turned out. So next one in line. This is a little sign here I got from Dollar Tree with a crooked little hook at the bottom. But I really did like the shape of it. It kind of just was cute. So... Uh, I got this magnet, which I showed you briefly, but we'll see it again. <laughs> um, so I'm taking the hook off of this this guy here, and what I want to do, it had some some glue on it, and the hook that was on it was was just blatantly crooked. I mean, don't you love how some of the Dollar Tree stuff does that? It's just literally blatantly crooked, but anyways. So I un unscrew those, so keep your pieces and keep those tiny little screws, because they're made for this item. They didn't go all the way through the back, but you are going to need them to reattach. I attempted to pull off our paper. It did not agree with me. So uh, the two parts where there was uh, screws in, I had to get my sander out. You'll see in a second. But that's the that's the scrapbook paper I'm going to put on there. I just I really felt like a yellow. I felt like all happy. It was a happy sunshiny day. That sounded a little Minnesota there, didn't it? Yeah, happy sunshiny day. <laughs> There's my sander. By the way, that sander is awesome. I love that sander. It's so comfortable to hold it. And I'm also using 80 grit on that, so it takes everything off. <laughs> So what I'm going to do here is uh, line it up to make sure I have enough room on this side. And don't, again, I was going to do hot glue, but like, no, it's going to show up. Let's do what I normally do, and I'm going to go get my wood glue. Problem, guys. Whatever you do, do not use as much as I used here. Yeah, oh, check it out. Tight bond. Isn't that great? Yeah, I got it at Lowe's. It's just wood glue. And there's where I put on way too much. Like, I pretended this was, like, ketchup you know, would have been now let me see if I was making a sandwich that would have been way too much I don't know what I was thinking now I like the sauce but dang Whitney <laughs> so anyways it wood glue I love it it's perfect for for you know putting down paper papers 
a tree, tree made of wood. Anyways, that's how I, that's how I justify it. But I used too much. In some of this, as we go forward, you will see wrinkles, okay? And I was trying to avoid that because that's why I don't use Mod Podge is because I hate wrinkles, right? Well, it wrinkles up on me and I smooth it out. I use my little Cricut like spatula squeegee thing and I get a decent amount of glue even out the edges after I start squeegeeing it. But then the paper starts to get a little bit too wet and I'm kind of tearing it a little bit so I had to calm it down and just let it go. If you were to look at her today, right now, everything's done and dried. It is smoothed out. It did not, the wrinkles did not stay. So I just continued working. I said, let me deal with these wrinkles as we go. And I used my finger sander here and I got all the little extras off the edges and wanted to distress it a little bit, but I wanted to mainly get those extra little paper pieces off the sides just to get that cute little, it's almost like a marquee sign or something. I don't know, it's super cute. So I just wanted to get the details. So I'm getting all the little paper off the edge. And here's where we're going to start decorating. So here's a cute little magnet. It says better days ahead and has cute three little green, Three, three little green potted plants and I'm a sucker for green plants so I thought it was cute I'm gonna take the magnet piece off the back just because I don't know how it's gonna react to the glue so that's basically just a, like a piece of pressed board with a little canvas around it so it's no longer a magnet it's a cute little picture so I want to attach this to the middle and I am measuring just to make sure things are about as even as I can get it because sometimes my eyeballing technique does not doesn't do me justice, put it that way. It's bad. So I marked around with a pen just so I could make sure I lined it up the way I wanted it to make sure it's in the middle because I am going to place some green Spanish moss around the edge of that. So I wanted it to be as even as possible. So here's where the Spanish moss is coming in. Now this green color is really, really bright and I got this at Hobby Lobby. I get them in a really big bag. As you can see, that's, that's it's just a really big bag. I think it's like $6 and it is a massive bag. So it will last you a long time. But I've never seen any other color than that that light brownish gray from Dollar Tree. Do you guys ever get different colors from Dollar Tree? Since I've been on this Dollar Tree kick for like the last year, I have never seen another color. But I like the bright green. It's it's This is springy, so we're making it a focal point. And then I'm giving all that moss a little haircut around our picture. So let's just make sure we put a whole bunch on and then cut 90% of it back off because that's how we do here, right? So look how fuzzy it is. It's so cute. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna reattach the hook because I still wanted this to serve as a wall hanging. So you could still put maybe your keys or you know a lanyard or some wristlets or something on it, depending on how you hang it on the wall. I mean, it's not gonna hold up, you know, cinder blocks or anything, guys. You know, or unless you use an anchor. <laughs> but again, it's particle wood. Be careful. It's not meant to hold up anything. You know, like small children. No, don't do that. <laughs> so I just put the um, the hook in the way I wanted to. You guys, I fussed with this bow way too long. You have no idea how much I cut out of this bow. So much fussing and messing with this bow. So I'm there's going to be a lot of cuts. So you'll see cut, 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 cut. Basically cut you a strip of the gingham and a strip of that yellow. The gingham ribbon I got or the buffalo chat, buffalo chad. So chad... <laughs> The buffalo plaid, obviously Dollar Tree, and that thinner 118 or 116 inch, I got that at Craft, or no, that's a Paper Mart ribbon from years ago. So basically I cut one and the other. I was gonna do a double bow, so what I did was just tied a bow, and then I tied another bow. It, literally, that's just kind of twisting the bow into like a, almost a, a, an awareness circle, and then I used another piece of yellow ribbon to tie that in the middle, kind of to give it a cute little cinching. So it kind of looks like a classic bow. And do you see how long I'm messing with this? This is sped up four times, guys. And that's just a, that's just a, a minute amount of how much I cut out. It's ridiculous what I did. Like, I'm, all, I'm mad at myself because I had to sit through this a second time. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I ended up committing to putting that bow on the left corner, which makes me happy. I love things at diagonals for some reason. And then that second little bow we're going to put right in the top middle. And that's all she wrote. I was looking at it and I'm thinking something's missing. I just, I don't know what it is, but something is missing and I need this to have something more. So it's so, okay, let me adjust these tails. Maybe it's something's not right about the tails. So I got all of them a diagonal. I put a fresh diagonal cut on the buffalo plaid and I'm looking at it and I'm like, why does this look plain? I'm kind of staring at it and I'm like, what can I do? What can I do? All right, so let me get my Waverly chalk paint black, which is called ink. And let me just lightly dry brush around the edges and see if I can give it some more coziness. It just didn't seem farmhouse to me. It was too, 
I don't know. Maybe it was because there was bubbles in the paper still. It hadn't completely dried. I don't know. But I was not a happy camper for a minute. So let me work at it. Let me work at it. See what I can do. See if I can come up with something to fix it, right? Because I'm like, this is just not, it's just not making me happy. So here's just after the dry brushing. Well, right now I am still not happy, guys. Something's missing. So I was like, let me poke at it. So I got my fine point Sharpie. And I said, let me just put little stitch marks around the outside. I was kind of in a country feeling. So like, let me see if I can get this to, you know, get the, uh, get, get, get to cooking with gas. Now we're cooking with gas. So I put all these little stitch marks all around the edge. And you guys, that is exactly what I needed. That right there, as soon as I was done, I was, I was really concerned that I was going to mess it up. I was concerned I was going to touch something and make it worse, but... I think this turned out great. I love the way the little stitches look on her and you could kind of see some wrinkles there, but they're all smoothed out now. You'll see here in the footage when I took a, took some videos in the studio lights, all that, all the wrinkles are gone and the paper's all smoothed out. And those little stitches make me happy. They just make me smile. I love it with the Buffalo plaid ribbon. And again, you don't even have to use this as a wall hanging. You can kind of prop it up in the background. You don't have to use the hooks on it. You can use it as a little staging item or maybe kind of prop it up against the wall in the back of a three-tiered tray. But it's also pretty functional as well. You could put it by a back door or by the garage door just to hang some keys on it or in a gas station with a big PVC pipe on it for the bathroom lock, you know. <laughs> Kidding, kidding. You guys let me know what you think. I love it. It's turned out really good and it makes me happy. I just love the green. She's like, okay, tell me what you think, guys. Let me know. Okay, next DIY here. These little houses from Dollar Tree, love them to death. Seen lots of great ideas with them. Now these are the other kinds of palettes. You can get those two kinds. So we use the first kind on our first little, you know, the first kind of palette. Now this is this to me looks like a real palette palette. I'm gonna use those as roof tiles. Uh, so what I wanna do is I'm going to painstakingly and in the most difficult possible way, take off the backing to the house. I am not going to leave it on because Every time I have seen anybody not take the back off, the paper placement is not so good, in my opinion. Okay? And we all know what opinions are like, so y'all don't have to agree with me, and I am okay with that. That is what makes the world go around. We are all different. But anyways, I did get my, um, my blade in there, and then eventually I got my little spackle knife in there, and I was able to get that off in one piece. Now, tried to take the paper off. Paper didn't want to come off. The backing, I cleaned that up a little bit. I think with some 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 stuff not sure now this is a square dowel I got from Amazon I got a pack of 12 or 25 you can find them in my Amazon shop should you need to but you can get square dowels at Hobby Lobby and Michaels uh, I got uh, that size just like that I, I believe they're 12 inches long so it's not one long dowel and I am going to use them in many more projects. Now check it out, my new miter shears. I have seen a lot of YouTubers and a lot of crafters use these, and I got me a set, and they are awesome. So I understand why everybody loves them. So here we are revisiting the gel stain, except for now it makes more sense, because here's where we started when I was trying to show you guys the, the gel, or at least the, the technique I was using. Those little palettes have a lot of nooks and crannies, and I am not trying to sit there with a brush for however long to get inside there. But I do want full coverage because those palettes are going on the roof. They are gonna be seen and they're gonna be pretty much a focal point. So I finally got my paint, or sorry, my stain to where I needed it to be. I had to add a lot more gel stain to it and I added a tiny bit of black paint in there. And you guys, if you're trying to duplicate it, it is, lit there you go, look, just put that in the water. That's all you gotta do. And basically the, the smaller parts, the stuff you're worried about, it's covered. So. Even on a larger scale, if you just want to stain them all ahead of time, get a bigger bucket, put a lot more water in it, and maybe an entire tube of paint. You don't have to use gel stain. You don't have to use antique wax. Just use paint. But if you water it down, you can get, you can get everything covered like that. And even those other palettes, get just get to use a bigger, like a bigger tub, like one of those wash basins or something from Dollar Tree. Then it doesn't matter if you, you ruin it, but you can also use it just for staining these little tiny palette things. I am going to take some more of just solid gel stain here. You'll see me put, there's a dab. 
And so here I'm darkening up the tallest parts. Now, again, I've got the inside painted or at least covered or saturated with the stain water, which made me happy because it's no longer just a raw wood. So we got the inside parts covered. And then here I'm just uh, putting more of that darker color to make it more saturated in just regular gel on the wood dowel, the square dowel, and on the tops of both of those little palette guys, just because I, I wanted them to have a darker, richer look. I tapped a little bit of the water there. I also painted the frame. If you can see to the top left up there, I did paint the frame. It didn't take as much because it's not real wood. It's kind of like pressed board, but I still stained that as well. Now here is a cute little, uh, what is that? That's like an eight and a half by 11. Uh, Hobby Lobby scrapbook page. And then this is actually scrapbook adhesive tape. It's ad tech, um, double-sided adhesive, that's scrapbooking tape. I did not want to repeat my wood glue incident of 2022. Uh, so on this one, I, this is the order I actually did them in. I did that one first. So on this one, I was like, no, Whitney, do not touch the wood glue. And I just put my little scrapbooking. I used to scrapbook like a monster, guys. Back in the day, I was a scrapbook maniac. So I have lots of scrapbook goodies. So I was just using my ad tech stuff. This isn't, it's not gonna go anywhere. You don't have to Mod Podge everything. If you're not gonna leave this out in the in the, the elements, it's not gonna get rained on. This is all meant for inside home decor use, guys. So don't be afraid to just use double-sided tapes or you know anything like that. Hot glue isn't going to melt in inside your home. It's, you know, just do what you, what you feel is going to be good. So there's no need to sand it because we, we used an X-Acto knife or, you know, just use a knife to cut that off. And here I'm going to put hot glue back around the outside and we're just going to attach the back on. And then look how cute it is. This blue, this blue plaid is just so cute. And it looks so good with the yellows because I was doing everything in a yellow theme, as you guys seen by all the thumbnails and everything. But I love this, this navy blue, this denim-y looking blue. It's like so perfectly summery springtime. It screams Murica, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. So here I'm trying to figure out, do I want the palettes to go upright or sideways? I believe we decided vertical, yeah. So I want them to go in the center because I don't want it to be weighted down. Uh, you know, I don't want it to fall forward or back. So I need to make sure I got them centered on both sides. So I'm just gonna place it upside down and I'm gonna use my pencil to mark where I, I need to make sure that's where I'm, I place the, the house frame on. So I you can't see them on the camera, but in you know if you're sitting there, you'll be able to see your pencil marks. So I'm putting wood glue on each side, because remember, we definitely want a solid hold once this is here. So the hot glue is in the middle and that's just our immediate hold, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing on both sides. So I'm making sure that I've got them even and I'm making sure that I've got a good amount of wood glue on each side and then a small amount of hot glue just to hold it in place immediately so it doesn't slide off. And then what we need to do is we need to clamp it. Now I got new clamps. I was so excited, 14 piece set. <laughs> Didn't get these at Amazon, so don't look there. I ended up going right to Lowe's to get them because Amazon's like, oh, did you want some? Here's 42 pieces. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> so put the clamps on, you know, you gotta have, I let that sit overnight, but here's me putting, and putting the middle piece on because I that square dowel was the perfect little um, accoutrement. Again, you guys with my French. So I put wood glue on each side and I put some hot glue down the middle. Now it didn't initially stick at first, so I pull it back up and I put a lot more hot glue in there so it can kind of ooze around so at least the end of it touches it. And then that's holding perfectly fine. Now there's nothing to clamp that with, but the hot glue got onto that and then I let that sit overnight and um, the clamps held everything right. So here's the next day we're going to unclamp and then look how cute it is. I mean, you could stop right there. I don't, as plain as in it, you could say it's plain, but but guys, there's a lot of stuff here I did not use. Now you could see to the left there, this, this, there's the three sticks I pulled out of my Spanish moss. I was gonna use them. I was like, Whitney, you're so crazy. What are you doing? Anyways, these are keys I've saved over the years. Tell me that you guys don't save weird things. These are old house keys, old padlock keys, keys I find in parking lots on the ground. I like keys and these are such a realistic home key. So I chose three keys that I think went to old locks that no longer exist. And I use a little metal hook that comes on them when you get locks. You know, you buy a padlock or something and it comes with the keys. So I did that. Also, those little Scrabble tiles I got off of Amazon, you'll find those in my store. It's a 500 piece set. I, those ignore me. I don't use those, so we don't even have to worry about it. Uh, that's my same ribbon. And then that's the new ribbon. That's a new farmhouse ribbon from Dollar Tree, guys. It's so cute. It's almost like a, 
It almost looks like a burlap or a, or, a, or a denim. It's so pretty, and it comes in lots of colors. There's a purple one. There's all kinds of stuff, but I can't believe I actually found something new that I've seen someone have in their haul, so it's pretty cool. Now, I'm putting on some eucalyptus. That, that's, an, that's an Amazon bush. I got like six or... No, I got 12 of them on Amazon, those eucalyptus bushes, and it took me a while, guys, to figure out how I wanted to do this placement. So to save you the pain of watching me literally shuffle these things around, we're just going to start making your bow. I don't know how much of this I cut out because I can't remember. I edited most of this yesterday. So I'm going to do a finger bow. And again, that I did not slow down or do it. There's been, I put some tutorials on some of my other videos to do finger bows here. So I tied a finger bow. And then what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use that really thin ribbon from Paper Mart. And I'm going to tie it in the middle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my um, keys to that ribbon first. So I put my keys on it because I want my keys to hang behind the bow so that they're hanging down in the middle. So I put the keys on that yellow ribbon and then I tie that to the middle of our finger bow. So it kind of looks like the yellow bow or the yellow ribbon is the center or the, the, the closure for the big blue bow, even though we've already tied that bow. And then so I tied a bow behind it once I, once I tied that knot. If that doesn't make sense, I'm very sorry. You could always try to just rewind the video and kind of slow me down to see what I did. But in any event, I have no clue what I'm doing here, but I left it in because it was literally so many cuts. I'm like, I'm gonna keep putting all these little transitions in. You guys are gonna lose your mind. I think I was talking to somebody on the phone or on my headset or something. I don't know. I honestly don't know what I do half the time either, guys. So I'm in awe just as much as you are sometimes when you hear me talk. <laughs> It's like, how on earth those squirrels are running around upstairs and they're not running into those cobwebs? I don't know. But anyways, so here I tied another little bow. This time I did a little finger bow for the thin ribbon and I did, that one's a double bow too. So cute. And I just glued that one to the top middle. So it does look like one cohesive, just big bundle of loop, loops of pretty loopiness. <laughs> so we'll get started applying your thing. Back to my bag of sticks. I'm sorry, I mean Spanish moss. And we're just going to tuck a little bundle of that right into the top, right at the top of that roof area. And we're gonna nestle that in there because that's gonna show up in the background and give that cute little country farmhouse that I love so much. And then I'm gonna put a couple pieces of eucalyptus in there just to get things started before I put the bow in. The bow is going to be the main event that we will place in there. And I'm just trying to show you how far into the, I mean, I stuck it way up into the apex of that roof. It's right up in the, right up in the crevice there. So don't be afraid to push things in there. Not everything is meant to be shown 100%. All of this is a beautiful mixture of pretty chaos, in my opinion. You want things to overlap. You want things to cover each other. And you want the bow to fall off, obviously, while I was playing. <laughs> Whitney, you have to let the hot glue dry because it's holding up three heavy keys. I mean, come on, girl. Yeah, I also said that to myself, but I could tell you with these four, these four projects, guys, I burnt my finger so many dang times. It's not funny. One of the times I literally just stuck my finger right into the glue, like complete. Yeah, it was, yeah, smooth, real smooth there. So this is how it turned out. I think the placement of my little Scrabble tiles made me happy. And then here's me showing you. I cut a piece off because I was getting smaller pieces of eucalyptus. And I just stuck it in the little hole right there on the front of that roof. And I was like, I love it. I'm leaving it there. So what I did was I propped up my bottom of my, hole, my house uh, structure with one of my ribbon spools because it was kind of laying too low. And I'm sorry in advance, but I do stick my head into the frame a lot because I'm... I'm an idiot. <laughs> but here I'm just trying to find something to place in there to give me a good space so that I can use it kind of like a level. So this is a, actually a, it's like a bone, what do you call it? It's a folding tool. You get it so that you've, in scrapbooking you can make folds and things and then you use it to really send, you know, really push in a, that fold. And that's from a, it's memories. It's called making memories or something, the brand. I, I haven't scrapbooked in years, but anyways. Yes, I have the wood glue, but don't worry. I'm putting a, a dot of wood glue and a dot of hot glue on the back of each one of those tiles. So what I've done is I'm I'm pushing it down, but then I'm also placing it down and pushing it towards that bone 
folder. I believe it's called a folding tool. I can't remember, guys. Just find something. If the popsicle stick was wider, which they come in different widths, use a popsicle stick, guys. I just didn't have anything that would fit in there except for this, and this was the perfect amount of space I needed. So I'm doing the H and then the E so that I have the good placement that I need. Both of them are about an inch away from the side. And then from there, I want to make sure that my O and my M are in the proper placement too. So you're going to see me mark when I get them even with a pencil. And that's my own guiding, guiding system to know once I get the glue back on, I need to make sure I place it right on that edge right before it dries because that hot glue is going to basically make it secure. And then make sure that you get that right where you want it. You can't see the pencil marks because we're covering them right on the edge. Then you take that little bone, fold, that folding tool out, which was our measure. We're good to go. And they're perfectly spaced and even, and I love it. And it's very happy when things were not work out that way. Now I'm just going to take random little tufts of the same Spanish moss, and I'm just going to glue it to the top of the roof. I didn't pick any kind of pattern. This is just random, completely out of order, and just find places where it looks cute, like little, almost like little nests. Like it's... It's been sitting under a tree for years and there's just, you know, all the pine needles and Spanish moss has grown there. It was like, it'd been really cute if I had a really tiny bird. The only problem is, is I didn't, I have a bird, but it looks gigantic on this roof. I, I have one of those our artificial birds with the little clip on the bottom. But when I put it on here, it was like Godzilla is attacking my house. It's, it was ridiculously huge compared to the home, so I didn't use it. So it's like, yes, I got this really cute little thing, but then it looks gigantic compared to the item you're making because the, the size ratio doesn't match. Have you guys ever done that? <laughs> and then like, I've done it on projects that I finished and then came back to it the next day going, Whitney, what have you done? <laughs> Let me know, what have you guys done? Have you done anything weird like that? <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. I, I mean, I'm nothing if not self-entertained. So I needed to add something at the bottom because I can't just leave stuff plain. I have to have something in every little corner. So all I did was take one eucalyptus. I cut the end off of it. I tucked some Spanish moss in the corner and then I glued them both in there. And then right when I was getting ready to leave, I forgot to dry brush. Dry brush it first, guys. Dry brush your stuff before you even put the backing on. Dry brush it before you start gluing in everything. Um, both of these projects today, I'm not, sorry, not both of them. The pallets and the wood frame, it, nothing really got too badly affected. I mean, if I got paint on the ribbon or if I got paint here on the Spanish moss, it did not affect the outcome. I think it looks great. And of course, I did do the back of the pallets, but I didn't do the back of the house. And then also don't forget to do the inside of the frame too, of what shows. I'm not sure if I actually left that in here. No, I cut it out. But you can see here in the picture or in this video, you can see I did dry brush on the inside of that frame going in towards the actual, you know, scrapbooking paper. And for a second, I almost dry brushed over my little Scrabble tiles, but I'm glad that it, my brush was too dry. And otherwise I would have had to baby wipe that off because I wanted those to make sure that those were a good crisp. You would be able to see them very well, but I love how it turned out. And those little palettes are perfect as roof accents. What do you guys think? I am so happy with this. It just, it makes me so happy. Like. You could do all kinds of stuff in this. You could put like a tiny little bird's nest in there with little tiny eggs, or you could do little miniatures. There's all kinds of little miniature stuff for dollhouses. You could turn it into like a little vignette of a dollhouse. You could do anything with this, but this is also a good idea for people who have just, you know, got a home and instead of putting home, you could put their last name down there, you know, as a housewarming present. But this one just makes me happy. I mean, I've said, you know, I'm sorry, I'm a broken record guys, but again, if what you're making gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling, then you're doing it right. And it doesn't matter. Everybody finds something beautiful. So if you don't like it, somebody else will. And if you love it, somebody else won't. <laughs> okay, last but not least, I'm going to make a blooming candle. Now, again, be careful, guys, because this is a real candle. I got this little guy here at Target, but you can get these little jar candles literally anywhere. If you see a jar candle with a lid on it, make sure that the lid is not too hard to get on and off because we are going to put an arrangement on the top of that lid. So you're going to need to be able to pull the lid on and off with something on it. So we're putting, you know, a styrofoam on the top and we need to be able to pop it off, which I'll show you at the end that you can get this lid off decently. So in your selection process while you're shopping, make sure that the lid is not impossible. If it's a twist off, that's okay because you can actually get your fingers in there. Actually right here. Sorry, I'm talking too fast. Jibber, 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 jibber. Oh, this is where I burnt my finger. <laughs> Uh, that ribbon is some old uh, craftoutlet.com ribbon that I used many years ago, but it is gorgeous. And right here, bam, stuck my finger right in that glue. It's like, literally, it's like, 
Jeff Foxworthy. You know what I'm saying? Here's my sign. Let's put molten hot lava down and stick your finger in it, Whitney. Yeah, sometimes I don't understand myself. But what can I say? I'm cute, so I get away with it. <laughs> I'm so humble. Anyways, I loved the two together. I have that striped ribbon in different colors other than yellow. But again, with the buffalo check, it looks so cute with yellow. I've never been a fan of yellow, but I love... Well, I mean, that's not true because I love lemons and sunflowers and they're yellow. So I guess I did like yellow. I can't really say that. I don't know why I'd say something like that. I'm sorry, guys. So here's another finger bow. And what I did was I put a, th a seam and um, on the yellow ribbon. And then what I did with the buffalo che check ribbon is I just put the seam towards the front. And then the finger bow that I'm making here, see me check my actual ribbon. You know, I'm checking my, my blister if it's forming because my finger hurts real bad. Like right now, I remember my heartbeat. <laughs> I can feel my heartbeat in my index finger. So basically I'm putting my little finger bow over the top of that seam. So I didn't have to create another, like another uh, hem or hem you could say, but like that, even then that's cute. If you guys want a cute little fast gift for somebody, you gotta go, you're going to a party or you're, you're going somewhere for just like a fast little thing. You want a hostess gift. You could just put ribbon on a, a cute little candle and it makes it so personalized and so high end. Oops, sorry guys, I just bumped my mic. Um, now that was a little um, styrofoam ball that I had cut in half. So that was a leftover piece. So take a styrofoam ball, cut it in half or just a chunk of styrofoam. It doesn't have to be a circular one. Now this is a Dollar Tree eucalyptus bush. Not the best, but not horrible. It's a good color. So well, you'll see me, I'm cutting off every single stem and I'm pushing all the little, uh, the greenery pieces towards the top. But each one of these does not have anything towards the end of the wire piece. So here you see me when I'm doing that, I'm curling that over. I'm taking the end of each wire and I'm putting a hook on it, almost like a little curly cue, like a circle into it to keep those items from literally being pulled off the other end. Cause otherwise it's like, it's like a curtain rod with no stopper on the end. I don't understand why they do that. And there's a lot of stuff in different stores. I mean, not just a Dollar Tree. There's stuff at Michael's and Hobby Lobby where they're charging way too much money and this stuff doesn't have anything to fasten, you know, the pieces onto. So then I'm doing a little bit more construction. I put every piece of that eucalyptus in this little arrangement because we need to cover up that styrofoam. There are some aspects to the styrofoam you can see, but it's only because I needed the lid to still be accessible. So it wasn't going down all the way too far to where I wouldn't be able to get that lid on and off. But I did want to make sure that it was covered and it was full. So here I am just putting in those little, uh, we'll just call them little hooks at the top to make sure that those pieces don't just slide right off the end. And I just filled this in. This is one bundle from the Dollar Tree. So $1.25 of this greenery. And we're just going to place that in there and make sure that that's covered. Now these yellow flowers off to the side, finger still hurts. <laughs> I don't know where I got them. I don't know what they were from. I want to say they're papery looking. I think they're probably Hobby Lobby from years ago, but it must've been something that I ripped apart and never used for a project. So I'm taking the greenery on this and I'm cutting them off. So I got one, one little stem and on each stem, I'm cutting the actual wire right above the leaves. So every single one of them, I'm getting a new segment. I'm using all of this as more filler for greenery. So you can see all of these, I filled it all in. So here's what we got so far. We got a fluffy little bundle of greenery and we're doing pretty good there. Yeah, you can see some star foam a little bit, but here's where the, the best part comes in. So we're gonna cut all the flower buds off and the little, the little stems on them were just sharp enough to pop right into that star foam. So I'm putting glue on the ends of all of them and I'm giving them all a little new home. That one got a little bent. I'm giving them all a little new home. I'm getting them right in that styrofoam. And this is the perfect, they're the perfect size because obviously size comparison, you don't want to put a gigantic flower on it uh, in them because it just would look ridiculous. But um, I used all the rest of these. So again, stash buster, I, I, these had been sitting in my rooms with a little zip tie around them for probably over two years. And so now they're on top of a little blue big handle. I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, again, when you burn your candle, guys, you take this lid off and you put it somewhere far away from the actual flame. This is all plastic made in China. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure there's some chemicals in here that are super flammable and melty. So do not put them anywhere near. So again, use your own judgment, but look how cute it is. The little finger bow, the, the ribbon. Oh, it just, there's that fuzzy feeling guys. It's so warm and fuzzy. So cute, so cute. So here I'm gonna show you how to pop the lid off. So I got my thumbs under there 
and then you just put the lid off to the side and then pull that wick up and you can light your candle you can put it on another riser you can put it off to the side and then here's me uh, picking the bank back up and placing it down now i'm putting my thumbs underneath the greenery to get around the edges that's around that styrofoam to pop that thing back down and there you go so just remember functionality of the lid does matter with these types of things if you want it to be usable otherwise you just made a candle into the base of your flower arrangement and if it's not meant to come off it's not meant to come off it doesn't have to but in this instance you still have a functioning candle and then once you're done burning it you have a cute little container with an arrangement on the top of it which you could put little glass beads in or candies and whatever after you clean the glass off or clean the, the wax out so that I mean that just makes me super happy and again this yellow stuff really did the trick guys this yellow all four of these these little yellow projects just make me smile and that's the best part about it. If you're smiling and you're having a good time, then it is what you've been meant to. That's what you're meant to do. It just makes me happy. You guys tell me what you think about this little candle, blooming candle, flower, happiness, fun, joy time. <laughs> it's the whole words into sentence making thing again. Sometimes I get too happy. I can't. I can't get the. I can't get the words out. It's just too happy. It's just too cute. Y'all get. Y'all get that excited. I just something about it makes me happy when I do this stuff. All right, guys, end of the video. Thanks so much for your time. I have a coffee page. I want to thank many of the subscribers already who have donated a coffee to me. I appreciate every single one of you. I also appreciate you, even if you can't. Just being here, liking, subscribing, spending your valuable time watching my video, making comments, click on the ads, doing that. That's all perfect ways to support me, even if you can't support me on coffee. I love every single one of you, and you guys have made every single day doing these videos fun and exciting and i appreciate you guys being here as much as you appreciate me making the videos so you guys thank you so much these little projects have turned out to be fun and fast and i just i love making these things for you guys it makes me happy and i also love the fact that you guys love everything so far you guys are a great community you're very supportive and i couldn't ask for anything anything else so Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for spending your time with me. And that's it. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I, I kind of get to the end and I'm smiling like a big, you know, a big doofus. Just happy as all get out thinking about how nice you guys are and how many wonderful things you guys say to me. How many messages I get with wonderful, really kind, inspiring things that, that help me get through my day as much as you need the help to get through yours. Sometimes we all have bad days. So... Thanks. Thank you all again. I appreciate you more than you could know. So take care. I have more planned. I've already gotten started on some stuff before this one's even been done editing. So I can't wait to send you guys the next video. So hugs, happy crafting to all, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay. Bye-bye for now.